Hi everybody, my name is Sheridan. I work at the Long Beach Public Library and I'm here today to show you how to write your own name in Ancient Egyptian Hieroglyphics. Before we get started though, I would encourage you to sign up for summer reading if you haven't already by going to longbeach.beanstack.org. If you've already signed up, be sure to enter the code PIRATE into the activities tab of your challenge to be able to get points for watching this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. For this, you're going to need some paper. I've got here some cardstock, but you can choose, you know, whatever you'd like. And I'm using markers today, but you can also use uh, colored pencils or crayons, pencils, really anything that you would use to uh, draw or illustrate something, okay? If you want to follow along in a little bit more detail, click on the link in the video description so that you can pull up the webpage that has all of these symbols uh, with a little bit more detail so that you can see sort of what I'm doing, right, as I do it. So let's get started. Hieroglyphics are word pictures that represent the ancient Egyptian language. And the word itself, hieroglyphic, or hieroglyph, comes from uh, ancient Greek words, hieros, which means holy or sacred, and glyph, which means writing or symbol. So these are sacred symbols that the ancient Egyptians would use to uh, mark the names of their pharaohs or magically protect um, you know, royalty or important people. And they would actually oftentimes write out their magic itself in hieroglyphics too. So the symbols carried a lot of weight in ancient Egypt. There's two kinds of hieroglyphic symbols. Uh, there's ideograms, which are images that represent the object that they, that depict the object that they represent. So for example here, this bread loaf hieroglyphic that is for the t sound actually depicts a bread loaf. And so that's an ideogram. There's also phonograms, which are images that represent certain sounds. So for example, here we've got uh, this basket symbol, which actually represents the sound that T and H make together in the English language. And so this basket represents the th sound, and thus it's a phonogram. You can see too that there's a mix. Oftentimes, a single hieroglyph can be both an ideogram and a phonogram. Hieroglyphs represent words phonetically. And so what does that mean? It means that hieroglyphs are used to actually spell out phrases based on the sounds in those phrases. So I'll kind of describe to you in a little bit more detail what I mean. For example, the name Michael in English is spelled M-I-C-H-A-E-L. But it's not really pronounced that way, is it? It's pronounced Mike. Oh, Mike. Oh. So for the first sound, I think I'm going to use an M. After that, we have an I, an I sound, right? My. Then we have a K sound, like a hard C or a K sound. But that's not really represented by the CH combination, is it? So I think I'm going to replace that with, you know, a symbol that has that K sound. For this, it's going to be a K. So, so far we have Mike. The last part is we have an A and an E followed by an L. But if you say the name Michael out loud, you don't really pronounce the A and the E, do you? You don't go Michael, you say Michael. They don't really, they're almost silent. So we're just gonna leave them out and represent the name like this, Michael. And so that is actually, this spelling is a little bit closer to how hieroglyphics represent words. Let's do my name. So my name is Sheridan, and in English it's spelled S-H-E-R-I-D-A-N. But it's pronounced Sheridan. So I do have that S-H sound, right? So I'm going to represent it with an S-H. I'm going to keep that there. And then we have a she sound. Now I'm going to represent that with an E. Next we have a share, an R sound, represent that with an R. And what follows up? So we have Sheridan, Sheridan. We don't really pronounce this I. The next sound is a D. Put that there. And then we have a share din, din. So I think here we have an I, a little bit of an I sound. And last but not least, we have an N sound. So this is the way that I would represent my name, Sheridan, if I was spelling it phonetically. And now I'm going to translate this a little bit into hieroglyphics. At this point, 
take a second to spell out your own name in English and really pronounce it and then transfer it into a more phonetic spelling. Pause the video if you need a little bit more time, but I'm going to go ahead and keep going and translating it into hieroglyphs, okay? So for this SH sound, I'm going to look over here and I'm going to find the SH sound over this way. We have this lake. If you see this SH, sh is represented in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics by a lake symbol. So I'm going to think, okay, well, what's there? So I'm going to put a lake there to represent that one. And this is just a rough drawing, so we don't have to get super artistic with this part. An E symbol, there's actually two. There's a double reed, which is a symbol more for names like Elaine. Then there's a vulture, which is a symbol for a name for the sound E. The vulture is E, the double reed is E. So I'm going to need the E, which is the vulture. So I'm just gonna draw a quick little vulture here. You know, it doesn't have to be super artistic. This is just for us to know which symbols we're gonna need later. Next up is the R symbol, the R. And here we have a mouth that represents the R sound. So I'm gonna do a mouth there. Next we have the D, D, the D sound. We have a hand that represents the D sound. If you haven't clicked on the link in the video description, it has all of these glyphs and stuff in much more detail, so you can actually follow along a little bit better. So, so far I've got sh, e, r, d. Now I need sort of that i, e sound, right? So, um, it looks like here we've got a single read, and that single read represents the i sound at the beginning of the name Isabel. So that's what I'm gonna need. I'll draw a single read there. And last but not least, we need an N sound, right? Like the letter N. And here we have a wave. And that wave represents the N sound. So the last thing to finish up my name is going to be a wave. And so this is how I would represent my name in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. Obviously, right now, it's a very rough kind of draft. But now that you know which symbols you need, now you can really take the time to actually draw them out and color them in and get really, really artistic with them, okay? I'm gonna flip to the next little thing here. So once you've figured out which symbols will actually spell your name, you wanna enclose them in a cartouche. And a cartouche represents a looped rope, as you can see, that has the magical power to protect the name inside of it. So the ancient Egyptians oftentimes would put the names of their pharaohs or their priests or their gods inside of cartouches because they were magical protection. They would take those same carvings or you know, art that had that name on them and they would place them in the tombs of their pharaohs or in the temples to their gods as a way of warding off evil spirits, both in this life and in the afterlife. So that's sort of what a cartouche is. So I'll show you here real quick. I prepared this earlier. I've got the English name, of the English spelling of my name. Then I've got a more phonetic spelling of my name. And finally, I've got my name in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs surrounded by a cartouche. Pretty cool, right? So you can take some of that paper that you've got, figure out which symbols represent your name, click on the link below if you, you know, need a little bit more detail about which symbols. You know, take your markers, take your illustr you know, any illustration tools you have, really work it out, and then get artsy. And then what you can do is you can take that cartouche with your name in hieroglyphs magically protected in it, and put it on the door of your room, or maybe perhaps on you know your secret stash of treasures that you've got in your room, really whatever you've got going on, all right? Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Put in the code PIRATE into your activities tab to get points for watching it. And if you haven't joined summer reading just yet, be sure to join so you can get prizes for reading all summer long. We'll see you guys around, okay? Take care, bye.